happy to be joined by my good friend, Mr. Robin Black. And Daniel Cormier says, while John Jones drags around, he is more than happy to face off against Alexander Gustafson for the interim 205 pound title. If John Jones doesn't want to fight Alexander Gustafson and he doesn't want to fight Daniel Cormier, I say I am in, make this fight happen. Yeah, that uh, interim uh, belt thing sounds pretty stupid, <laughs> but you know what? That could actually happen, right? Couldn't you see that yeah. actually happening? Like Dana White kind of going, you know what, John, fine. You want to play these games with us, bro? We're going to give these guys a fight for the title, you know? I could see it happening. The fight's good. The fight is outstanding. The, the good thing about, you know, if you were Cormier, the bad thing is, oh, man, I got to fight a dangerous guy, and if I lose, I don't get to fight for the title. But the good thing about putting in that idea of the interim belt is like, hey, I'm fighting for a title. So it's a, it's a win or lose for a belt thing anyways. And the other addition is, on some level, Gustafson is a trial of John Jones. Yeah. He has the reach, he has the, the movement, and he has some of the dangerous elements that John Jones has uh, physiologically because of his height. So you get to go in, if you can beat him, you've learned a few lessons, you've handled a few tests on your way to fighting John Jones. Uh, for Daniel Cormier, is he rushing things right now? You look at the fact that he's 35 years of age, and you have to imagine his team at AKA, they're telling him, look at, try to get as many fights in as humanly possible because there's no guarantees in this sport. Yes, let's just say he goes up and faces John Jones for the title. He's going to get a big payday because it's for the title against one of the pound for pound, if not the the pound for pound best fighter on the planet. But there are no guarantees after that. Let's just say he loses to John Jones. There's, the rankings really don't yeah. matter. It's like whoever the UFC says that you're fighting, you could be fighting. That's why he ended up fighting. Uh, you know, was scheduled to fight. Uh, Chael Sonnen and Rashad Evans, yeah. his two broadcast pipe partners, as well as an aged Dan Henderson who weighed in 199 pounds. Yeah, they're like, look, if it's making us money, that's the fight we're going to book. That's how it works. We got to all stop pretending it works any other way. And you know what? If you're Daniel Cormier, yes, you got to make some money. But as far as too soon or is he in too big a rush, we were at the Black Belt Hall of Fame, me, you, and, and Wei, this beautiful dinner that they threw. The uh, traditional, mar traditional martial arts community is such a cool environment. And I was chatting with Mark Bowen check and my level that I was ever going to achieve was very low because I came in really old and I'm not that good but uh, Bo Bocek was like you know what you had to learn quickly and you had to go test yourself because you're old this is the only opportunity you're going to get and so you, there's no such thing as a rush you do it you either can handle it or you can't and at 35 years old with the level of wrestling that he has Cormier is in that situation I think he can handle anyone on the planet. He thinks he can handle anyone on the planet. His buddy, Cain Velasquez, thinks he can, so go do it, man. But well, you talk about that. Um, you go back to this past weekend, you look at Gegard Mousasi taking on Mark Munoz, and he looks so comfortable in there. He, as we've talked about before, this guy's so cerebral, he's so calm, he never gets rattled inside of the cage. And you have to imagine one of, those, one of the reasons is because he's been competing for so long. Started at 20, 21 years of age, and now at 28 years of age, he's, he's, he's able to handle the pressure of fighting Leota Machida, or fighting Mark Munoz, or you know maybe he gets his crack at Chris Weidman yep. or Anderson Silva. I think he's going to be calm because of that experience mm -hmm. and the, the slow build to face off against the best on the planet. Yeah, think about that for a second. You're 28 years old and you've had 41, 42 yeah. fights against top level guys, against the best guys in the world in every different discipline as well as well-rounded guys. Yeah, man, you're going to be so calm. You've got hours in that cage. Yeah. And, and it's true. Cormier goes in and blows through a low-level guy or goes the distance with a high-level guy. But you know what? He's fought Barnett. Yeah, He's fought true. top Frank guys. Mir. And Olympic level, Olympic caliber competitor, that carries over. I know it's different and they're screaming, it's a cage and you're wearing your underpants and you're bleeding and you can't breathe and your nose is full of goo, but it does carry over that world-class elite competition level. Uh, UFC fight night goes down this weekend in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Former UFC lightweight champion Ben Henderson taking on Habilov. I, I love this fight. Yeah, I think it's going to be very, very exciting. And I think we'll kind of make sense of the, the 155 pound division because right now it is one of the best the most deepest divisions in all of mixed martial arts and I, I think each one of these guys has to have a career defining performance they have to light it up yeah. because you're, they're not just in here to make money they want to become the best on the planet and the way to do that is take out all challengers in impressive form and get your crack at the 180 155 pound yeah 
uh, you know, we talked about this one on five rounds this week. It's a hard one to break down, really hard, and that's why it's such a cool fight. You know, Henderson is hard to challenge anyways, but Kabalov's got a different collection of skills. How do they measure up? I actually also like Dos Anjos yeah. and Jason High on this yeah. one. Got a big, powerful wrestler dropping down to 55 to fight Dos Anjos, who's also hard to figure out a little bit different, has a different skill set. These are the fights we love. These are not the biggest name guys. These are not big superstars that walk red carpets, but they're talented guys who put on brilliant fights. Uh, I love the matchup because Ben Henderson is a, you know, this guy is a proven warrior. He's creative. He's powerful. There's no area of the game that he neglects. He comes in ready to perform, and it seems that every time he steps inside of the cage that he's going to be facing off with the number one yeah. guy in the division. That seems to be the mindset from Smooth. Yeah, he's, he's a fantastic fighter, and he does 25 hard ones every time. So you say, oh, he's not a finisher. Yeah, it's harder this way. It's tougher. Your body takes a beating, and nobody beats this guy. Kavalov's going in there to try to do it with that uh, uh, combat sambo mentality. It's going to be really cool. It is a battle between the U.S. and Russia. The action goes down this weekend. Don't go anywhere. More Fight News Now Extra is still coming at you.